Are you looking for profitable products to sell online? If you're a dropshipper or any type of a new business owner, choosing that right product is going to be instrumental to your success. From branding to marketing to shipping and pricing, it's really gonna shape your entire business. But coming up with a great product idea is a little bit tricky and aimlessly searching on Google is only really gonna get you so far. Fortunately, there are amazing opportunities out there and we put together a short list of five places that you can go to find some product ideas. Let's get started. Welcome back, my name is Michelle Bally. I'm a creative strategist and I'm also your host for today's video. If you're a new entrepreneur, I want you to think about subscribing because each week we're gonna be bringing you step-by-step -step coaching on how to start, run, and grow your online business. Also, make sure that you're sticking around until the end of this video because I'm gonna give you a formula on how to come up with some truly unique ideas to develop brand new products that people are really gonna be excited to buy and you're gonna be equally as excited to sell. All right, let's get into it. Online consumer trend publications. Following consumer trend publications can expose you to new products and new industries that you maybe didn't even know existed. But one of my favorite publications is Trend Hunter. They're the world's largest trend community with over 200,000 hunters dedicated to finding you the latest trends. You can find trends from pretty much any industry. So we're an e-commerce store, so let's go into culture and then we'll hit internet to see what's trending online. And there's some pretty cool niche stuff here. We have empowering pandemic emoji designs. And you know what? Already, just off the top of my head, we could create a dropshipping business selling socks using these types of designs. It's actually funny because Jeremy, the founder of Trend Hunter, he wanted to be an entrepreneur, but he didn't know what idea he wanted to pursue. And so he was hunting for inspiration and that's how Trend Hunter was born. Definitely meta. But I also want you to check out PSFK. They are a membership-based platform that provides personalized trends and research that's gonna help you stay ahead of the curve. You can use these resources to identify trends that are happening in other parts of the world and then bring them home. That's how Dan started Incas. Incas is a shoe brand made of authentic South American textiles. Dan spotted the trend and he thought that it would also do well in North America. He was right and he successfully funded his Kickstarter project. He raised over $77,000 in pre-orders. Industry leaders. If you have an industry that interests you, following influencers that are always on top of trends can give you some nice tip-offs. To discover influencers, I want you to check out Dovetail. With Dovetail, you can search influencers by industry, location, and even the amount of followers. I'll leave a link in the description box for a free trial to Dovetail, but there are also several other online tools that you can use. You can discover influencers with follower wonk and all top as well. Social curation sites. Image curation sites can be a gold mine for product ideas. Just by looking at the likes, you can sometimes get a sense if there's gonna be a market for a specific product or niche. You probably already know about Pinterest, but here are a few more sites that you can check out. Check out We Heart It. Here you can find beauty, fashion, photography, and travel ideas. Also check out Dude Pins. Dude Pins is a place to discover and buy products targeted towards males. Another place to check out is Fancy. They describe themselves as part store, part magazine, and part wish list. Use it to find a range of gift ideas. Wanello, so Wanello, also known as Want, Need, Love, describes itself as an online community for all of the world's best shopping, bringing together products and stores in a Pinterest-like product posting format. B2B wholesale marketplaces. Why not find your product ideas straight from the source? Wholesale and manufacturers are gonna expose you to thousands of potential product ideas. And also it makes sense to start here because if you see something that you like, you know you can start selling it right away. Alibaba and AliExpress. So you probably have already heard of AliExpress and Alibaba, but these are platforms that connect consumers with manufacturers from Asia. They have hundreds of thousands of products and there's not really much that you can't find, but the main difference between Alibaba and AliExpress is that Alibaba is intended for B2B transactions. Alibaba is gonna help businesses purchase large quantities of products directly from the manufacturers at wholesale prices. Whereas AliExpress, on the other hand, is open to consumers. So if you're wanting to test the market, check out AliExpress for smaller quantities. Overlo. Like AliExpress, Oberlo is also a marketplace, but this marketplace is owned by Shopify. Your suppliers sort the inventory and ship orders directly to your shoppers. 
Oberlo integrates seamlessly with Shopify, which makes it a popular option to find ideas and stock your products. Oberlo also has a trending product section to help you browse for popular and trending items. Some other B2B marketplaces include TradeKey, Global Sources, Made in China, and Wholesale Central. Industry and niche forums. Depending on the industry that you're targeting, there may be a forum site out there for you. Gaming is one of those industries that has a particularly active online community. You can check out forums like GameFAQ or NeoGAF, but if you're in fashion, check out The Fashion Spot, and if you're in fitness, head over to Nerd Fitness Rebellion, and you can also check out geeks to go If you're in another industry that I haven't mentioned, just type in your niche into Google, followed by the word forum, and then you should see a few come up there. And also don't forget about Reddit. So Reddit is the forum of all forums where you can basically find any industry, any niche, any culture and subculture. All right, so those are five solid places to get your gears turning. I recommend you start there. But if you're looking to create brand new products from scratch, here's this really cool method to help you start with some ideas. If you're hungry for more knowledge, you're gonna to wanna to check out this free 40 minute webinar. It's gonna teach you how to find and source a winning product to sell, how to validate that idea, and how to get started. Just click the link in the description box below. How to produce brand new ideas. This thinking theory comes from a book called A Technique for Producing Ideas. It's written by James Webb Young. It's actually one of my favorite books, but the theory is that an idea occurs when you combine two or more existing ideas. Your ability to bring old ideas together to create something new is going to depend largely on your ability to see relationships. The concept argues that there are no new ideas, only iterations. So here is the five step technique to combining old ideas to create something new. Step number one. So first you gather material. This includes specific material that's related to your product. And that's going to be information on your target audience and your competitors. Target audience. Craft questions about the problems and the challenges they face. Which products do they love? Which products do they hate? What do they wish that they had to enhance their everyday life? So places to collect information are consumer facing publications. These types of publications within your industry can reveal a lot about a market segment and what's trending. Do audience surveys. So these are one of the best ways to get quantitative and qualitative insights into your audience. Also check out SEO analytics and insights. This can show you what's trending on search globally or targeted to a specific geographic location. Competitor research. Learn from the successes of your competitors and popular businesses in your chosen industry. What products were launched with massive success and why were they so successful? Places to collect this information are competitor websites for one. So here you can look at the copy. How do they describe their product? What customer pain points are they targeting? Identify gaps in your competitor's product offerings and look for ways to fill those gaps with your new product. Competitor communities. Go to their social media networks and ask about who their audience is and why they love their products. Look at what the brand is saying to consumers and how consumers are interacting with them online. After this, you're also going to want to collect general material. The general material is going to take on a form of fascination with a wide range of concepts. So look at historical trends. Look at world issues. Basically, the more general knowledge that you have, the more opportunity you have to create new relationships and new connections between ideas. As long as you're acting as a sponge in this phase, then you're on the right track. The next step is an intense analysis of what you've just learned. So work over the materials in your mind, talk about it with your network, do mind maps, take notes. You basically want to mentally chew your new material by looking at it from all different angles. At this stage, you're also going to want to experiment by fitting ideas together. So do this by making an idea generation table. Here's mine. I made a column of existing products, then a column of world issues. My products listed here are coming from the specific research that I did in the step before, and the world issues are coming from the general research from the step before. I created a third column where I will fill in possible solutions by combining these first two columns. The aim of this is to create meaningful new ideas that can impact the world. So this next step is actually almost counterintuitive. You're going to want to step away from the exercise, get away from your desk and just completely put it out of your mind. This is going to be difficult because once you're on a roll, obviously leaving it is the last thing that you're going to want to do. But in doing this, you're allowing the subconscious to work. During this free time, do something that energizes you. 
Do something that brings you joy. Go on a walk outside, do some yoga, just free your mind completely. Now, you have to allow the idea to come back to you naturally. This requires a lot of patience, it requires a lot of discipline, but your idea will come back to you with a flash of insight. But this will only happen after you've stopped straining your mind. Many ideas are lost in this final stage because of the lack of patience, so just think of this as the art of letting go. Once the idea has come to you, your next step is to produce your idea and then test it in the real world. Make sure that you're asking for constructive criticism. Good ideas have self-expanding qualities. So when someone sees it, they're gonna be really excited to tell you how to improve on your idea. So only ask people who are within your industry or your target market, but then listen intently to their feedback. Don't be too precious about your ideas and make sure that you're adapting it as needed. Be mindful that the ego can blind us at this stage. The ego is gonna to wanna to stop us from adapting our ideas to fit the actual conditions of the world. And this may be because of stubbornness or pride, but if you think of this as a phase where we validate the usefulness and the demand of our new idea, then your openness to learn is gonna be what makes you successful. The key with this is less about knowing where to look for your particular idea, but more about training the mind to grasp the principles and training the eye to see the relationships. If you're excited about the product that you're making, you're gonna genuinely involve yourself in the research and getting into the business of it. So just make it easy on yourself. Choose something that you're actually passionate about. Becoming fascinated with what you do is a full and rich way to live, and it's gonna ensure that you never run out of ideas. But if you're stuck on finding your passion and want me to make a video on how to find your passion, make sure that you're leaving me a comment below and I'll see if there's enough interest to maybe make that video. Shopify is offering a free 14-day trial. All you have to do is click the link in the description box to take action so that you can level up your e-commerce business. All right, I feel like that was a fun one. How do you guys feel about that lesson? Do you guys prefer more step-by-step -step tutorials or do you like this theory-based skill building that we did today? Let me know in the comments section. It would be great to hear your feedback. And also, if you have a friend entrepreneur, send them this link. I'm sure that they're gonna thank you. That's also gonna help our channel and our community grow. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Michelle Valley, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.